Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome all KGS members and glaucoma specialists from worldwide. My talk in this session will be about vascular biomarkers in glaucoma from 24-hour ocular perfusion pressure to OCT angiography. My financial disclosure here. Let's think about vascular risk factors first and then move to vascular biomarkers of glaucoma. By WHO definition, risk factor is any attribute, characteristic or exposure of an individual that increases the likelihood of developing a disease or injury. For hundreds of years, we have done tons of researches on various risk factors for glaucoma. Without any doubt, intraocular pressure is very important. However, more attention should be paid to ocular perfusion pressure component, especially in normal tension glaucoma. Nearly 15 years ago, Dr. George Flammer proposed this beautiful hypothesis that unstable ocular perfusion pressure caused ischemia reperfusion damage of mitochondria and activation of astrocytes, possibly leading to glaucoma. This innovative idea has revolutionized the way of thinking towards the vascular pathogenesis of glaucoma. To prove his ischemia reperfusion hypothesis, we devised the concept of circadian mean ocular perfusion pressure fluctuation, which was defined as the difference between uh, peak and trough MOPP calculated from the 24-hour in-hospital BP and IOP monitoring, which stands for the degree of the daily repetitive attacks of unstable ocular perfusion pressure. Our early studies were focused on the relationships among nocturnal hypotension, circadian MOPP fluctuation, and NTG development. What we found were that Marked circadian MOPP fluctuation was associated with nocturnal BP reduction and that it was the most consistent clinical risk factor for glaucoma severity in antigias. For the next study topic, we decided to do, deal with the paracentral scrotoma. Paracentral scrotoma should deserve glaucoma specialist's special consideration because it may hinder important daily activities such as reading. In the following studies passed in IOVS, we analyzed the NTG progression pattern associated with circadian MOPP fluctuation and found out that NTGIs with unstable ocular perfusion pressure had faster paracentral visual field progression than the eyes with stable ocular perfusion pressure. Why is it like that? The watershed zone hypothesis may give some clues. We know that retinal ganglion cells are unevenly concentrated in the center of macula, only with a single-layered capillary support system in peripheral area. Also, macula consumes more oxygen per weight than any other tissue in the body, thus we can guess that peripheral area may be more vulnerable to vascular stress than peripheral papillary area. Now, let's move on to the topic of vascular biomarker. By the American NIH definition, a biomarker should be objectively measurable and can indicate normal biological or pathogenic processes. Conventional biomarkers for glaucoma can be largely divided into structural and functional ones. Structural biomarkers may include CD ratio, or the thicknesses of neuroretinal rim peripapillary RNFL or macular GCIPL. Functional ones include various visual field parameters. Now we have a question. Do we have vascular biomarkers for glaucoma? With the advent of OCT angiography, now we can measure blood vessel densities at different locations and in different anatomic layers. The first vascular biomarker which was initially discussed in OCTA glaucoma studies was the optic nerve head vessel density. Uh, this is one of the early papers which found out the significant associations between optic nerve head vessel density and structural parameters including rim area, RNFL thicknesses or GCC thicknesses. You can easily notice 
decrease the vessel density in the glaucoma to optic disc. The second vascular biomarker is peripapillary vessel density. Let's look at these beautiful images created by MATLAB software. In normal eyes, you can notice orange color-coded thick vessel density, prominently in the supratemporal and infratemporal area, very similar with normal RNFL distribution. Uh, but in glaucoma, no such a distribution is found. One of the advantages in using peripapillary vessel density as a biomarker is that there is less flow effect. When you analyze the correlation among peripapillary vessel density, visual sensitivity, and RNFL thickness, we reach an interesting conclusion. In moderate to advanced glaucoma, the vessel density to functional relationship was significantly stronger than the conventional RNFL thickness to functional relationship in peripapillary area. The third vascular biomarkers, which are our major research interest, are fovea a vascular zone related parameters. Fuzz area can be analyzed in more detail by OCTA. In our studies, superficial retinal images were analyzed using image J software. Fuzz related parameters included size, perimeter, and circularity index. Let me give you a supplementary explanation of the circularity index briefly. It is a compactness measure of a shape relative to a circle. Index of 1 means perfect circle, and that close to 0 means extremely irregular shape. So we can assume that glaucoma patients may have lower vascularity index if microvascular damage or peripheral, peripheral area progresses. Let's get into the more detail with this idea with the simulation. This is a real patient image with a fast circularity index of 0 0.73. If I overlap these black dots, which stands for capillary dropout that can happen in glaucoma progression, fast border becomes a bit more irregular with one more overlap. Now the fuzz border becomes more irregular and the circularity index decreases to 0 0.40. So we may regard the fuzz circularity index as a potential vascular biomarker representing the disrupted peripheral vascular network. These changes of fuzz morphology happen in real world glaucoma patients. You can notice the figure C and D are from only glaucoma to size show irregular fast borders with lower fast circularity index. Figure E and F from advanced glaucoma to size have notably enlarged fast and increased perimeter. We tested the diagnostic accuracies of fast related parameters and found out that the AURC values improved after the refractive error adjustment. Uh, notably, fast perimeter and circularity index showed statistically comparable diagnostic accuracy to the traditional uh, reference parameters such as uh, peripapillary RNFL thickness or macular GCIPL thickness. There was also a spatial correlation between the microcirculatory alterations of peripheral and visual sensitivity in the eyes with paracentral visual field defect. Uh, in this group, the hemifaz area corresponding to the uh, affected hemifield was larger uh, than uh, that to the unaffected hemifield. In the group with the peripheral visual field defect, this association was not found. I have a curiosity which I, I want to, which I want to share with you. In nephrology, it is well known that some types of kidney disease begin from the breakdown of the capillary system of glomeruli. Uh, then I have a question like this. May some types of glaucoma be associated with more aggressive breakdown of the capillary system of the periphobia? This brand new article from Professor Rich's team, now impressed for IOVS this year, may give an answer to my question. This study investigated the molecular vessel density uh, between pseudo-exploitative glaucoma and POAG. 
and found out that the full thickness vessel density was significantly less in XFG group than in the POH group in parafoveal area, implying that there are more widespread microvascular ramifications associated with the exfoliation process in XFG. Like this article, I believe that vascular biomarker research using quantitative assessment of microvasculature using OCTA may help to investigate the pathogenic processes in different types of glaucoma. Thank you for your attention.